Hey there, Nick Juntakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how two or more users can share the same directory on a Linux system. This could be really handy if you're deploying a website or web application to a server, and you want to be able to deploy that application as two or more different users. So even if you're a solo developer, I still think it's a really good idea to set up two different users on your system, because you might have the first user on your system, an admin user, deploy user, a Nick user, whatever your name happens to be, and this user can basically do anything, right? Essentially root access to the server without having to uh, literally log in as root. But you might want to also have a second user on your system that is much more restricted. And this could be really handy if you are deploying through CI. So if you're using uh, GitHub Actions or Bitbucket Pipelines, or you have uh, GitLab set up with their runners there to, you know, basically be able to deploy your application through CI. You know, even as a solo developer, that's a great thing to do. But it's kind of funny because you know, GitHub and these other providers, sometimes they go down. And in my opinion, it's a really great idea to have a backup plan to be able to deploy your application without depending on CI in case uh, they happen to go down. Because, you know, why should a GitHub adage prevent you from being able to deploy your application? You know, maybe that's a rant for another time. But in this case here, you know, we've got an interesting scenario. And by the way, that CI user, right, it should be heavily, heavily restricted. That's why you don't want to necessarily reuse the same admin or deploy your Nick account, whatever it happens to be. Because yeah, why should your CI server have root access to your application? or to your actual server. Um, it should only be able to do very, very, very minimal things like maybe get push code to your server and that's it. There's actually mechanisms to be able to do that very easily by setting the shell of that user to get shell. And I'll make videos about that one in the future. But yeah, you can see how this is now a dilemma, right? You might be deploying your application as uh, the NIC user or the CI user, and you're going to be deploying your application to the same directory. Suddenly, uh, two different users need to be able to read and write files from that directory in harmony without getting permission denied errors. So in this video, we're gonna go over some, uh, I guess, ground zero, like over permissioning stuff, and eventually we're gonna arrive at the solution there, which uh, long story short is going to be setting a specific sticky bit. That's why I have this directory here. So I'm logged into a server right now where I have a couple of different users set up to just demonstrate the issues here. But let's begin by, uh, yeah, just creating a directory here called, you know, my site. This would essentially be the site that you're deploying on your server. You know, I wouldn't put it in a temp directory on a real server. You know, chances are I would just put it in SRV my site. I'll make future videos about uh, just general Linux uh, system hierarchy stuff for Debian-based systems here, which uh, this is uh, an Ubuntu 2204 server, by the way. Not important though. But yes, we have this one directory here called my site. It is owned by Nick Nick. Why? Because I'm SSH'd into this server as Nick. And if I go into the my site directory, then it's gonna be empty because I just created it, but I can just do touch test here. And if we do uh, an LS there, we can see that this file has been created as Nick Nick. Everything totally standard and totally normal, right? Uh, you would expect this, right? You make a directory, you make a file. If you're logged in as a specific user, that user is going to own that file and jack in that directory. That just happens by default on any Linux-based system. You know, it doesn't need to be uh, Ubuntu unless you modified that uh, at a different level, like maybe in your FS tab file, like wherever you're mounting your file system or whatever, but that goes way beyond the scope of this video. But let's say now that uh, you are deploying your application through your CI environment. Now, uh, I do have a CI user on the system, but like I said before, like this CI user is like super restricted. I can't even touch a file in a directory because I can't even do that. Yeah, so I made a second user on the system or a third user, I should say, called someone. And this user, I didn't even bother setting up, um, you know, bash for them. So it's a regular shell. So I'm not even gonna get some uh, really nice autocomplete here. But, you know, if I go here and we take a look here, we can see that's the my site directory. If I try to touch a, a file in here, I'm gonna get permission denied. And that makes sense, right? So this my site directory, it is owned by Nick Nick. I am now logged in as, uh, who am I? I? Logged in as someone, a completely separate user. You know, this someone user can't make a file in a directory owned by Nick Nick. And you can get around this quite easily by just having, let me go back to here so, so we can see what we're looking at here. Uh, just by having a group that both users belong to and then making that group um, set here instead of a specific user. And if I run the ID command here, I do have this one group on the server called SSH users. And I think this is a really good idea to do on servers in general, where anyone who can basically SSH in or deploy your application, you know, putting them in a common group is a reasonable idea. So, uh, and by the way, that someone user also is in here too. If I, you know, rerun that one command here and run ID, we can see that they are in the SSH users group as well. But uh, going back to here, let me then change the ownership of this directory to uh, yeah, just have that SSH users as the group here. So we can just do chown here, and then we can do, what do we want to do? Well, we want to change it to nick SSH users on what? The my site directory. 
And if we do that, now we can see that SSH users has a group ownership there. And if we go into my site, nothing has changed here. We just have this one file. You know, I can still touch like another file here as a Nick user and everything is normal, right? Nick still owns the file because I touched it, et cetera, et cetera. But now if I actually go into um, the someone user here, where am I actually? I think I'm in that directory. Yeah, cool. So I can now touch like um, from someone or something like that, right? And that now technically works. Why? Because the common SSH users group owns this directory. So that means anyone in that group, such as Nick and someone can both write files or directories to this uh, my site directory. And you would think like, well, okay, well, problem kind of solved, but mm, not really, but almost. So the issue here now is uh, this someone user created this from someone file, but as the Nick user now, if I try to touch that someone file here, I'm gonna get permission denied. Why? Because, you know, how could Nick modify a file that was created and totally managed by, you know, someone else, a different user? So we've got this situation now where it's like, yes, we can both write to the same directory, but we can't overwrite files created by someone else in that directory. And uh, if you think about what would happen when you deploy your application to your server, you know, maybe it's through a get post receive hook, but eventually you're gonna run a get checkout command in your script to actually deploy your application. And that is going to create files in a directory. Like long story short, you're gonna end up wanting to overwrite files that previously exist in a directory. And you're gonna get permission not permission denied errors just like this because you can't check out files to the directory because yeah, they're just gonna be owned by someone else. So what we really need here is some mechanism to be able to say like, okay, cool. If this my site directory is owned by SSH users, how about every single time a file or directory is created in there, make the ownership of the group this ownership here, basically the parent directory of where it was run. And we can do that through a mechanism called a sticky bit. So this is a very specific permission that you can set on directories and files on a Linux-based system. So if I go and just stat this my site directory here, we can see that this directory's permissions are 775. This is totally normal uh, by default on a Linux-based system. Any directory that you create is going to be owned by seven, or it's going to be uh, set as 775. We can also see here the git is set to SSH users because you know we modified that before at ch own. But yeah, that's all good. But you notice that there is a zero before that 775. And you know if you just uh, ch own something like this, then if you don't supply that first value, it is going to default to zero. And yeah, that just means that uh, any files or, or directories created in that directory, uh, they're just going to be owned like normal things, like Nick Nick is going to own it or someone someone, et cetera, et cetera. But you can actually set uh, this zero to a different number, and then things are going to work that the way that we want them to. And yeah, this zero, again, is just called the sticky bit. It can be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think, don't quote me on that one. I'll throw an overlay just to make sure it's accurate. But we're going to want to set this to two, which is basically going to say that in this directory that is now set to 7775 or 775, let me actually do it first. So if I do chown 2775 on the my site directory, then, uh, oh yeah, okay, I have to do that pseudo because we have other files in there not owned by myself. So if we do that, that looks totally normal. Uh, nothing changed. Wait, I'm dumb completely. Never mind. <laughs> so it needs to be, holy cow, what happened here? I don't want to ch own, my God. I really broke things. No, I didn't break things, but I'm just dumb. So uh, SSH users, yeah, there we go. All right, all right, all right. I'm just failing. Never mind me for a second here. Uh, yeah, we don't want to CHO on anything. We want to CH mod 2775 on my site. And yeah, there we go. I was wondering why I got permission denied there. That Yeah, okay. So now if we run a stat on my site here, notice that the access is 2777 or 2775 now. And if we go into this my site directory here, nothing changed. Uh, it's still regular business as usual. Nick Nick owns this one file here. I also own the test file and that someone else user owns this one here. But check this out now. Now if I touch, um, you know, uh, cool, like another file here, uh, it is actually going to be owned by SSH users instead of Nick for the group. and. That is really nice because now if I were to go and uh, jump over to this someone else, where am I again? I'm in here. If I, you know, touch that cool file, totally works. And uh, we can see that it was touched by someone. Well, we don't see exactly that, but I can make another file here called like touch like you're like, yay, right? And then uh, this one is going to be owned by SSH users as well for the yay file here for someone. So we now have a mechanism when our strategy is complete here. We have a way to share a directory by two different users. 
And if you were to deploy your code as a CI user or whatever, uh, things would just work because yeah, they can just happily, happily uh, share these files here. And of course, these files here that are owned by Nick Nick and someone, someone, they wouldn't be there. You know, that, that was just demonstrated for the sake of the video here. Um, yeah, so normally, you know, you would not have them there and, and you wouldn't have any issues, but that's gonna do it for this video, I think. A uh, nice little handy tip to have two users share the same directory. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.